All right, this is where stage one began. Apparently this house has been empty since May of last year. Now this is, that's the door, because this is where the room I used to be in. I used to be in that room and Essentially, there was a lot that was going on with this property, but this is where it started. And this house has been empty for a while. Apparently someone bought it and they were clearly trying to rehab it, but apparently something happened. Um, Essentially, they got a notice from the city to stop work. But this is where it all started. This was stage one of my come up, so to speak. I was in this house about two years and nine months. Now, what's funny, there was a family that used to live in that house, which is now boarded up. But it is crazy what is going on. And it's very interesting because when I was here years ago, this was all black, right? Now there's a bunch of white folks around here with gentrification going on. But this house, there used to be a family in here. And this was... 20 some years ago and now this house is jacked up and it's kind of crazy I mean there used to be a family living in this house and wow Wow. So, for some reason, man, essentially it was an old group of people. And wow, this house is pretty messed up. But this is where I fell into a state of economic despair. And here's one thing. In my Rich People of Atlanta video, I showed you a house that was built in 1952 and it's not in the best shape, but it's worth 3.2 million. I wonder what the property values have uh, come to in this area it's very interesting to see that house in worse shape than it was when I left very very interesting so let's go ahead and bring the drone out living in the West End was an interesting time in my life this was 23 years ago. And, you know, this is one of the craziest things about the West End, which is being realized today, that there is beautiful architecture in the hood. Some of these houses have been tricked out, made to look fantastic. Uh some of these houses are absolutely amazing but they're in the middle of the hood some of these houses are huge like what i was showing you the house i used to live in which was a boarding house probably six thousand seven thousand square feet it was massive but it was uh i remember 
looking up the property records and the guy who bought the house who no longer owns it since uh they were trying to rehab it he only paid like twenty thousand dollars for that house twenty thousand dollars okay and there was 10 rooms and 150 dollars per week 10 rooms at 150 per week and he only paid twenty thousand dollars so within like four months he had gotten his money back and he was doing like you know seventy thousand a year off a property that cost him twenty thousand i mean you know when you do the math it makes phenomenal sense um it was really a cash how. You know, it was um, such a good deal that you, I mean, it, it just made, it would make sense for anyone to do it. And this was kind of what was happening in this neighborhood. That wasn't the only boarding house. There was actually quite a few boarding houses. And, you know, some of these houses, they look good from, you know, just driving by. But like that house I showed you that was across the street, it, it's an other disaster. And this is one of the things that you see happening in this neighborhood. Uh, because I had a friend, if I've been thinking... I would have went around the corner and see if she still lived there. Uh, at one point she refused to buy any more flat screens cause she had been, her house had been broken into seven times. She was a nurse. She worked 12 hour shifts. So they would literally break in her house, steal her televisions. And you know, it, it is crazy when you look at, cause essentially I, I had this dream, right? Because there was so much beautiful architecture. I was thinking about um, some kind of investment program into the neighborhood. And it just wasn't going to work because of the mentality of the people in the neighborhood. It just wasn't going to work. Uh, there was a very despondent, very low level of at times self-loathing. It was a very low level of success. Cause essentially when I was living in this neighborhood, um, they used to mock me. They used to, Cause I would shave and I would have like some of the neighborhood characters who literally would be 40, 50, 60 year old men now walk around me. All right, Mr. Officer. Cause I shaved. There was this assumption that I was a police officer that was planted in the neighborhood to observe them. <laughs> I'm serious. You know, I'm just realizing that I'm just thinking the back to that, which is crazy when you look at what went down but once again you know from the air this looks like a gorgeous neighborhood and there are some jewels in this neighborhood there are some amazing houses there are some amazing architecture but one of the things that really cracked me up it is cracking me up at the number of white people that live in this neighborhood now. It is literally blowing my mind. I just saw two white women, older white women walking somewhere and this neighborhood, it has changed quite a bit, quite a bit. So there's been phenomenal change in the West End. There's been a lot of building. There's been a lot of gentrification. And one thing that was interesting, because when I was over here, I noticed that the West End Mall, which was like a thriving uh, center of commerce, was closed. 
and I noticed that a lot of because we're the West End Mall and across the street there's a sh- storefront. They were also closed, so I don't know if this was during COVID and everything because where I'm at, everything is open. Perimeter the Mall, Lenox Mall, Phillips Mall, they're all open. But in this neighborhood, many of these small shopkeepers are um, in struggle mode. They are really, because once again, uh, this is one of the reasons that I live where I live. This neighborhood just gets richer and richer. Now, even though you have gentrification in this neighborhood, the West End, it's going to still have poor segments forever because yes there are white people moving in there are white people creating new energy and property values are going up but this place is still going to have somewhat of a hoodish appeal forever forever it is never going to change you will have um I was watching a video, a Bedford style up in New York, how even though it is gentrification, the property prices have exploded, it still has a hoodish feel. And this hoodish feel, I don't know if that's the appeal. I don't really know what is going on because I have never lived in the suburbs. I don't know what it's like to live in the suburbs and want to live downtown. Now, Park, well, actually, Stone Mountain, I guess that would be considered the suburb. So I take that back. But, you know, just looking at this, there was a lot of memories that came by because there was prostitution was epic. The number of chicks out here selling their bodies was. I mean, I remember one day I was sitting on the front stoop and a crackhead was holding a gun and walking down the street and literally just shooting in the ground, just shooting in the ground. This is what a crackhead was doing. And one of the things that, you know, my first 18 months here were I was mentally going through some stuff, man. I was really going through some stuff and I didn't understand where I was and I didn't understand the matriculation and the process, but what I have come to understand is environment is key to you escalating and moving up and moving up levels in life. Environment is everything. And this right here was not the environment for me to achieve the things that I achieve. I was watching a video where a dude was uh, kind of dissing Erica Williams. He lived in the West End with four roommates. And once again, it is a collective mindset of people living on those low vibration. There is almost an air of despondency in the neighborhood or it was like 23 24 years ago uh everyone trying to had a hustle everyone tried to do some and this was was funny because there were a lot of professionals that lived in the house because one of the things that i consistently saw was that people who inherited the house from their parents and kept it up There was a lady who lived around the corner and she had a fantastic house. She drove a Volkswagen Beetle when she was a professor at Spelman. So literally she had like a five minute commute, right? And I used to talk to her and her mother and father bought the house and they left it to her. So, you know, she was just like, you know, it's, it's a crazy neighborhood, but she says, I'm living rent free, mortgage free. And back then, these houses were not really appraising for what they appraise for now. If she still owns that house, it's probably worth half a million now. Um, One of the things, because I I need to look up the the valuation of the property, because it's no longer a, a boarding house and someone was trying to 
flip it. Someone was trying to flip it and they actually had a stop work order in May of last year. So that house has just been sitting and there's nothing going on in it. And, um, you know, it, it, it's crazy because I look, if I had stayed in this neighborhood, I would have not become who I am today. Wouldn't happen. There was so much gravity. Uh, there were so many things weighing down on you, my personal demons and personal issues. And then the collective mindset of we're not really trying to expire to anything great. We are just out here living, surviving it. That, that was the mindset. And this is one of the reasons that I live where I live because it is a mindset of escalating. It is a mindset of moving ahead. It is a mindset of building and it's a mindset because essentially zip code 30327 is going to continue to get wealthier and wealthier and wealthier and wealthier. It's never going to go down. It's never going to change. Uh, another neighborhood like over by Emory, those homes by Emory, similar uh, methodology of what happens in Sandy Springs, except it runs kind of into Decatur but there is a collective over there in by Emory of homes that long as they're by that university, they're just going to get more and more expensive. They're going to build, they're going to continue to get wealth. But this neighborhood is an interesting observation of what is happening in America. This is the second part of phase two. This is where I moved to when I left the east, the west, west end. I moved to the point. And other than that fence and those rocks, it really hasn't changed. There's an apartment back there and there's an upstairs and downstairs. And this was during the renecrate phase and then i moved to stone mountain when i got the job at panel systems and this neighborhood is a little bit better it's got a little bit more going on um it's not as dense as the west end but this is part of phase one i was leaving that um West End abode. And you know what's funny? Whoever lives here is a veteran. You know how old that is? That's like 20 years old. I forget when they closed uh, Fort McPherson down, but it's been closed for a minute. 